morning, and thank you for ordering up this amazing morning. I am so thrilled to be here with you. My name is Taronda Ellis. I am the CEO of the Jamaica Plain NDC. <laughs> Welcome to the JPNDC Brewery Small Business Development Complex. And I am thankful to be standing here with these amazing women, our governor and our mayor, lieutenant governor, undersecretary, and our very own rep, Samantha Montano. So this is how we do it at the JPNDC. I am going to welcome you all to our home. This is your home. Please make yourselves comfortable. And I am going to turn this mic over to our esteemed guests. And we have some announcements today that um, I think we'll all be very pleased with. So thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Well, good morning, JP. And good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Taronda. Um, I think we want to begin today by recognizing and offering a moment of silence for dear Mel King, yes. who uh, many of you had an opportunity to work with, to learn from. I know I learned from him at his breakfast table about a lot of things, and I know how committed he was to housing. I know the partnership he enjoyed with Mayor Wu, and it is a loss for the city of Boston and for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He was a great man, a great leader, a leader who led in times of such trial and had the ability to have a vision for things that others not only didn't have a vision for, but did not think possible. And he also was persistent, persistent right up until the very, very end. And I think that's a lesson I take from Mel King is his continued persistence to pursue justice, and fairness and equity and recognize our obligation to do all we can to make that happen. So in that spirit, we think of our dear friend, Mel King. Thank you. He'd also want to cheer for today too. Wouldn't he? He would. Good. Um, so uh, many thanks uh, to, to all of you for coming out today, to, to Mayor Wu, um, to Sheila Dillon, others on her terrific team, the entire City of Boston team that contributes to these projects in so many meaningful ways and housing projects generally. We are grateful uh, to you for all of that. To our Undersecretary, Jennifer Maddox, who runs our Department of Housing and Community Development. We'll speak later about some of the awards we're delighted to announce today. Of course, uh, my great teammate, your great Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, um, and, <laughs> and our state representative, Representative Montano. It's great to be <laughs> He's doing great things, including making 3371 Washington happen. So this is a celebration of your efforts. And to, to all, Taronda and the team at JPNDC, we love what you do, we love what you're about, and we're here to work with you. Um, the representative said, welcome back to JP. I appreciate that. When I was at, at Northeastern in law school, I rode the, the 39 bus every day, uh, <laughs> back and forth. And um, yep, we are working on that. I can assure the mayor and everyone else, we're, we are working on that, but not, not for today. Today is about our permanent supportive housing grant program. And we're really excited to be awarding $62 million to 12 projects around the state. Adding to that state and federal tax credits of an additional 74 million, this means we are having projects that will be coming online, either new developments or preservation, 450 units of permanent supportive housing for families, seniors, veterans, young people, people experiencing housing insecurity. So that's, that's what today is about. And one of these programs, we'd love to come to JP. Um, today we had the opportunity to come to JP because one of these very programs is right here 
uh, around the corner at 3371 Washington Street. We're awarding the JPNDC uh, with more than $8 million in tax credits and subsidies. You guys knew that, though, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and we recognize the incredible work of JPNDC and their partners um, and what this will mean for dozens of seniors, in particular, who have access to new and safe and secure housing. Um, so this, this work doesn't uh, happen without a whole team, team effort. And at this time, I just want to introduce our friend uh, and your Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. I always love showing up at um, events where you, you get to give out money. I'm just not used to being on this side of the podium. I'm normally sitting over there. Um, so I want to thank the governor and congratulations to JP and DC and all of the awardees. It really is a feel good morning when we're talking about being able to support such important housing in all of our communities. We, do, we know, you know, far too many people in our state are facing housing insecurity unable to afford their rents or mortgages as the cost of housing and seemingly everything else just continues to rise. The work that all of you are doing is just so critically important for helping more people access safe, secure and affordable housing. Like housing really is a human right and I'm proud to be part of a state that really recognizes that and puts our money where that value system is. And for certainly um, for the population that need it most, our vulnerable population and our seniors. Our administration is committed uh, to being a partner with all of you in, in really taking this work on. Earlier this week, uh, the governor and I had the pleasure of testifying in support of Article 87 legislation. This is the legislation that would create a standalone housing secretariat and a new cabinet officially titled Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. Yeah, we think that's pretty important. We think it's pretty important because it will not only en enable the administration to continue to support grant programs like this, but also expand our capacity to drive housing production at all income levels in all regions of the state. I looked at the list of awardees, you know, today's recipients go from Pittsfield, you know, to JP, from Greenfield to Worcester, like it just signifies how much of a challenge we have around the Commonwealth to provide the housing that communities need. And this housing secretariat will work across state government with cities and towns, our federal government, public housing authorities, public and private developers, advocates, and other key stakeholders to put together a comprehensive housing development strategy that builds more housing because we need it. It will administer the financial assistance programs and focus on, like, of course, housing production, but rehabilitation, preservation, affordability. We want to put an equity lens in ensuring that we're building stability and security. And again, centering fairness and equity in all that we're doing. We hope it will help create and revitalize neighborhoods where young families, workers, and seniors can live, work, and thrive. So much of what is special about our neighborhoods is the combination of people, the diversity of incomes, the backgrounds, this housing, uh, particularly this housing cabinet, will enable us to create, enhance, and accelerate those types of communities and neighborhoods across Massachusetts. And we know that while housing is really a driver for so much of uh, the inequities that exist, and frankly the high cost of living in Massachusetts, it's not the only thing, especially when it comes to our seniors. So we've also done things like propose doubling the senior circuit tax break, um, tax credit program. That's going to help more seniors be able to stay in their homes. And we've also proposed an expanded child independent uh, family tax credit to provide an additional $600 per year to families with dependents, including seniors over the age of 65, knowing so many of us are helping take care of young ones and helping take care of older adults that are in our lives. That's about living and in your community and aging in place with dignity, programs like this and the housing that it supports. Later today, the governor and I will be traveling to the Canton Senior Center uh, to talk about the support for councils on aging. We've increased that budget by 15%. You know, as a mayor, I remember what happens in a senior center in a council on aging. It's more than just about uh, the collection of resources that you're able to access there. It's about the camaraderie, the socialization, that opportunity to bring together people uh, to recognize uh, what they can do in their community when they're together and to support and nurture that environment. So we're gonna be thrilled to be there. And I just, I just want to re, um, re-emphasize how fortunate I feel to be partnered up with Governor Healy, so committed to making sure these issues are front and center, whether it's a cabinet meeting or in a community. 
we want to make sure we're thinking about the affordability of Massachusetts across all of our cabinets. What can we do, whether it's housing, food insecurity, education, child care, health care, including health care as housing as health care, and including health care as mental health services. You're really leading that effort, really grateful to be part of a strong team that's trying to deliver and take a whole of government approach to lowering cost and delivering for people, delivering for people the type of quality of life we all want in all of our communities. You know, we know we can't do this work alone, um, and we take it takes partnership with you, your agencies. Like anything that ends in a CDC is always like my love language, right? And so, um, but it also takes like strong partnership at the local level. The state doesn't build housing, cities don't build housing. It takes people coming together to say we want housing, we support housing, we know who benefits from housing, and I think we're so thrilled that we're working in Boston with a partner in Mayor Wu who understands the value of housing. Sometimes um, as a local leader, it, I, also, I often feel like it can be lonely at the top, <laughs> um, but not when we're working in partnership. It's a really hard job, and I don't think anyone else could do it better in Boston. So really grateful to have you here, to have this partnership in building housing and tackling these challenges together. Thanks so much for joining us, and please uh, welcome you to the podium. Good morning, everyone. The energy is high at this event. Sometimes these, sometimes when there's a podium, it gets kind of, you know, we're talking, we're talking. But we know the energy is here because there's some seniors in the house. Mass Senior Action is here. Our residents are here. And I am so excited, so thankful to stand with this new administration and our partners at the state level. The governor, Lieutenant Gut, rocking their jewel tone spring <laughs> look here, um, matched with the powerhouse leadership that, that they're already, as you see, delivering into our communities. I want to thank also our partners at the state legislature. Uh, we're so excited for Brett Montano's leadership uh, quarterbacking our uh, rent stabilization proposal up at the state house as well and already getting involved um, even before a formal office has been assigned. <laughs> Oh, you have it now? Great, great. <laughs> um, and thank you so much, Undersecretary Maddox, uh, for all that you do. For, we've been on a lot of Zooms together on all sorts of topics. Um, so as I do at every event where there's something that I have to talk about, um, right before I pulled aside Sheila Dillon and I said, what should I say? <laughs> um, Sheila is incredible. And her leadership is, has been transformational for the city for a long time. And so I'm so grateful every day that she's at the helm of our Office of Housing. Um, thank you, Sheila, for all that you and your team do. And so do you want to know what Sheila told me to say? <laughs> Sheila said, talk about our residents. Talk about our seniors. The people who have built our communities, who are getting squeezed out of the city of Boston who are fighting every day to stay in the very places that they have made thriving communities. And so for this grant and these set of awards to include not one, not two, but three projects in the city of Boston, all for supportive housing for seniors, more than 100 units, this is going to go a long, long way. We believe in Boston that nothing happens in isolation, right? Sheila's office and all of our housing efforts go hand in hand with planning for the larger community. How will these families connect to the transportation that's needed, to the services that are needed, to the supports and programming? And for seniors, we are so blessed that not only do we think about housing, we think about ways so that you, when you go to sleep at night, you wake up the next morning, you have something to do, you have somewhere to go, you have some uh, activities or friends and community to be with. That is under the purview of our commissioner of Boston's Age Strong Commission, Emily Shea, who is here as well. She's been leading investments in her offices to be able to provide direct services on a number of different fronts, um, everything from health care and insurance enrollment to um, all of the, the social supports, any question that you have. And so um, I'm so thankful to work alongside all of these leaders in City Hall. I will give uh, one, sorry, one more shout out to someone who's very important, our boots on the ground and representative in Jamaica Plain, our neighborhood services liaison, Tiffany Caballero. <laughs> 
So um, thank you to the governor, Lieutenant Gov, the undersecretary, and everyone who's been involved in partnering. Um, we, we are so grateful and excited for what's to come. Uh, there are multiple projects here that the City of Boston will benefit from, more than 100 units in total. But I am really excited that we get to celebrate here with this organization. Um, Taronda and I go back a little bit. Um, I, I, I had first met JPNDC when I was an intern for Mayor Menino and working on small business technical assistance. Um, and then in my first sort of exp exploration of whether jumping to maybe serve in elected office would be uh, something that I should think about. I had a lot of conversations about what the issues meant and how to do something about it in Boston. Some of those very first conversations about housing were with Taronda, with Rebecca, with then Sarah, who was a lot smaller at that, at that moment. Um, and so this organization has been a mainstay in our city for a very long time. And we're so grateful for all that you do. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and Mayor Wu for your remarks. What an honor to have all three of you with us here today. Yeah. And thank you so much to Toronto Ellis and JP and DC for hosting us. I am so grateful to be here with so many representatives of the housing community to celebrate these awards. This is one of the largest permanent supportive housing rounds that we've ever had. We have, we, have, we have more projects, we have more interest in supportive housing, and we expect that this will continue with the commitment that we have with all of us here today. In addition to the big numbers that the governor mentioned, there will be over 120 housing vouchers that will help, right, right, that will help these developments, that will help these developments operate for the long term and nearly all will receive additional local and private funding. Now, I wanna thank Sheila Dillon and her amazing team at the City of Boston for partnering with us on the housing development work that we do and so many other issues that we work together on in order to make sure that we are increasing our supply of safe, affordable housing. Now, I'm excited now to read and celebrate all of today's awardees. You know, do me a favor, because there's 12 of them, so please hold your applause to the end. <laughs> I know the governor and lieutenant governor have to get to Canton, right? Okay, so 3371 Washington Street here in JP, JP and DC. Cheney Homes Apartments, Grove Hall, JP and DC. Hamilton at Mount Everett, Dorchester, Viet Aid. 170 Cottage Street, Chelsea, the Neighborhood Developers. Hennessy House, Lynn, Affordable Housing Associates. Forward at the Rock to Dennis Forward. 60 Well Street, Greenfield, Clinical Support Options. Bracewell Youth, North Am Adams, Lucent House, Inc. First Street, Pittsfield, Berkshire Housing Development Corporation. West Housatonic Apartments, Pittsfield, Berkshire House Development Corporation. 7075 Worthington Street, Springfield, Clinical and Support Options. And finally, 237 Chandler Street, Worcester, South Middlesex Opportunity Council. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. What an amazing array of projects here today from nearly every part of the state, including five projects in Western Massachusetts to an expansion of the fantastic Ford at the Rock development on Cape Cod, which provides specialized housing and services for individuals with autism. Right, right, right. Now, I want to recognize a few more people. Thank you to the team at CDAC, which does the critical early work with nonprofits and organizations who want to build this specialized housing. Roger Herzog's team has immense expertise and additional pre-development funds that really help these projects go from ideas to one-stop applications. So thank you to Emily Cooper, who her work at the Office of Elder Affairs and across EHS is just a champion for housing. And I want to thank the group at MASH, Massachusetts Alliance for Supportive Housing. We have been working so closely with you and our team 
to expand the supply of supportive housing. And to my team at DHCD, you know how I feel about you. But I have to say it again, thank you. And I want to thank the governor and lieutenant governor for ensuring that housing is a top priority for this administration and taking the extraordinary step to create a secretary at housing. And with these resources, of substantial resources, we can expand our scope to really match the need that we have at this moment. And I also want to take a second just to kind of reiterate what others said about Mel King and the impact uh, and the importance of his work. And building affordable housing is not for the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. It is tough work. But like most tough work, it is so important. It takes funding, money, right? It takes planning, community engagement. But it also takes all of us working together with your talent and expertise to make sure that we are building a Massachusetts that people can live, that they can actually raise a family and thrive and be successful. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Great. Well, um, I, I just feel really, really fortunate to be standing here. The energy of our undersecretary and the DHCD team is awesome, and the collaboration and the leadership from the mayor and the tone and to Sheila and your team, it's great. And I know that the representative is doing really important work because we've got to think outside the box when it comes to housing here and across the state. We understand that and know that we're going to be a team to work in partnership with other leaders in supporting what needs to happen to make sure that people have the kind of housing that others have just spoken about. So uh, with that, wonderful to be here. We look forward to more, more of these and more housing. And, um, oh, Toronto is telling me I, I'm going to open it up for questions. That's right. Right? Right? It's good. You got to tell me what to do. I am very comfortable with that. Does anyone have any questions? Or are we just going to celebrate and get on to the next projects? Question? Yep. Sure. Under Secretary Maddox. <laughs> Support. Oops, excuse me. Supportive housing is so important. Like it's, it's great that we can actually build the units, but it's important that folks who need services to make sure that they can thrive in place and in the community. And so it's important that we are tying together not only the unit, but also the services to help them. Thanks for your question, and I'm sure others may want to may want to comment. Um, look, I want to be really clear with people. We, as an administration, as a team, um, are really mindful of what's happening with with rents that are just skyrocketing. And here's what we did in our budget, for example. Uh, we actually provided funding for rental assistance, and I want to be clear. That's funding. We propose funding for rental assistance that is at five times, seven times the level it was before the pandemic and would cover five times the number of families as before the pandemic. So I want to assure everyone we are big time committed to making sure that people have the rental assistance that they need. And with respect to uh, rates and rents themselves, we have said 
uh, that we are open to supporting communities in their efforts to do what they need to do to provide access to housing. And that has engaged us and includes us in discussions around rent stabilization. So I just want to be clear about that. Okay, so we are here to celebrate. Is it okay? I, I'm, we're always down for celebrating. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Because you don't always get to celebrate That's every right. day throughout the day. So I, I wanted to make sure that everyone sort of, now that we have this energy um, from our amazing guests here at the Brewery Development Complex, I wanted to first thank JPNEC's partner at 3371 New Atlantic Development. Thank you, Brian. We go way back. I just wanted to ask for a show of hands. Um, does anyone know who owns this complex? No. Anybody? The JPND. I wanted to point that out because in 1983, at the same time that our Beloved Mel King was launching his mayoral, comp uh, mayoral candidacy. Many, many of the early organizers, the organizers, the folks who were on the ground, grassroots, with our beloved Mel King, saw this dilapidated brewery as an opportunity to revitalize this neighborhood. And but for those board members, those early board members and organizers of the community, some of them are here with us today, still boots on the ground, JPNDC's board is incredible. What we are able to do by stabilizing a site like this is to revitalize this community. And we have more than 30 businesses operating here, over 500 people employed here, many, many of whom are nonprofit organizations, early think, t think tank businesses. And I just wanted everybody to understand what we do here is we stabilize community. Because we have individuals like our director of organizing who are carrying forward the torch, Gio Valencia and his team. <laughs> We don't, we don't sleep much, but that's okay because we are nourished. We are nourished in energy by our community. We dedicate our lives to this work because we know with all of the support of the folks that you see here today, we're able to make differences. So I just wanted to thank, take a moment to thank Mass Senior Action. Thank you. We don't do this by ourselves, right? It's a community effort. And you guys stood up spoke up, yes. came through, yes, hold it down, <laughs> yes. yes, that's what we do. So JPNDC is very thankful to have 87 of those homes coming to seniors with services to support their aging and to give dignity. I just want to thank everybody for coming out this afternoon, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank some of our other neighborhood organizations and, and general, um, sorry, City Life Vita Urbana. If you're here in the, in the house, thank you. There are so many organizations who stand with us and stand with across the Commonwealth to do this work, and we cannot be thankful enough for that energy, that love and support, and those phone calls and those texts. So thank you for coming to the home of JPNDC. And we're here. Please eat. Oh, Governor, I'm standing right in front of you. No, it's all now. good. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.